Hello, welcome everybody to uh, Zahid's uh, data mining channel. Uh, my name is Zahid Islam and I am a uh, senior lecturer in the School of Computing and Mathematics at Charles Sturt University, Australia. You can learn a little bit more about myself from my uh, web page, uh, the URL of which is shown here. Today I will talk about a decision forest algorithm called CIS4. Of course the very first question is what is a decision forest? Uh, a decision forest is actually an ensemble of a number of decision trees, a set of decision trees. Here in this slide you can see there are three decision trees. So there is a tree on the left side, in the middle and on the right. Now, of course, the next obvious question is, what is a decision tree then? A decision tree is something like this. It's a tree-like structure that you can actually uh, create or build from a given data set. So then, what is a data set? A data set, by, data set, by a data set, what we mean is like a two-dimensional table, as you can see here. This is a toy data set, example data set of uh, a soccer club, for example. And in this uh, data set, you can see there are 12 rows and quite a few uh, attributes or columns or features. And the soccer club is actually story, storing their... Um, records uh, storing the information about each soccer event, soccer match, and game ID 1, that's the first match, and there are some information about that game. For example, the venue was home, they played in their home ground, goalkeeper was mat, weather was dry, there were around 20,000 crowd, and finally the result of that match was lost, they lost the match. And you can see there are some wins and some loses. So, from a data set like this, you can actually build a decision tree like this. There are many decision tree building algorithms already existing, C4.5, CART, etc. You can use any one of them, uh, you can apply them on this data set, and it will completely automatically build a decision tree like this. The beauty of these decision tree algorithms is that you do not need any preconceived knowledge or pre-assumed knowledge, etc., unlike many traditional data analysis. So what does a decision tree do? It extracts some knowledge from the data set and it tries to classify the class, class attribute or the label, which in the previous data set was uh, the result, right? So here in this tree, in this in this big figure, you can see that the tree is trying to find out the reasons why sometimes they lost and sometimes they won, purely based on the data set. It's a data-driven approach. Here on the very left side leaf, um, you can see that it says that if the venue is home and the goalkeeper is mat, then the result is lost. So, And there were two such uh, occasions. So they played twice with uh, uh, Matt being the goalkeeper at the home ground and the lost in both cases. Now we know how to build a decision tree, what is a decision tree, and we also know what is a decision forest. But how to build a decision forest? There are many different approaches. One very common approach is bagging, where what they do, they actually from the original data set, so this is the leftmost data set here, is the original data set, they create a number of bootstrap samples or uh, bagging data sets, bag data sets, something like that. Boots, they call it bootstrap samples. So they randomly pick some records from the original data set and then they, um, from those random records, they create a new data set, which is the original data set with some records being duplicated, multiplied, and some records being not taken into. Um, and then from that data set, they can use any traditional decision tree building algorithm and build a decision tree. So if they build 20 such data sets by randomly picking records with replacement, they have 20, 20 such data sets. And from those 20 data sets, they can build 20 trees, as, as simple as that. And that's how you can have an ensemble of, tree, uh, of trees, and um, there you go, you have a forest. 
Now, there are many other different approaches as well. For example, random subspacing and, uh, um, and also uh, random forest, which is a combination of random subspacing and random forest. But the main focus of this video is SIS4, that we want to introduce the basic steps of SIS4 um, and how SIS4 actually builds a decision tree. So how SIS4 builds a tree is um, it does not make a bootstrap sample. It or only works on the original data set, but still it can create a number of trees or ensemble of trees. How? While it creates a tree, it needs to, at the root node, find out the best attribute that can justify the reasons of wins and loss the best, right? So just to build one single tree. But when it is finding the best attribute, it also knows the, um, the justification capacity or you can say classification capacity of all other attributes. If in a data set there are 20 attributes or features and a decision tree building algorithm can pick the best attribute that can classify the data set the best then it also knows the classification capacity of all other attributes. SIS4 just takes advantage of that and based on that it actually ranks um, the attributes um, based on their classification capacity and then it picks a set of good attributes that they are not that all of them are not the best attribute but they are good enough to actually classify a data set. Then what it does it picks the best attribute from that set of good attributes to build the first tree and the rest of the nodes are built as usual using general or, or traditional um, classification algorithm uh, C4.5 or CART or whatever and it also then builds the second tree by picking the second best attribute from that list right so there is a list of good attributes it picks the best attribute to build the first tree and then it picks the second best attribute to build the second tree then it picks the third best attribute to build the third tree and so on so these attributes are just taken at the root at the root node at the very first node of the tree and the following um, segments or following nodes are calculated or picked as usual now, if, say for example, a user is wanting to build um, 100 trees or 50 trees and you only have or SIS4 only has 10 good attributes in the, in the set, right? So then after building 10 trees, it will run out of good attributes and it cannot build the 11th tree. So how does it solve that problem? It actually then goes to the second layer. So in addition to picking good attributes at the top layer, the root node, it also identifies a set of good attributes at the second layer. And then for the 11th tree and onward, it goes back to the best attribute at the top level at the root node but then it picks the second best attribute at the second layer and so on and there are some uh, smart ways that it handles those things and you can actually find those details in the paper and I will tell you the URL of the paper where you can download the paper free and of course in that paper we also proposed two voting techniques uh, what is a voting technique? When you have uh, a number of decision trees instead of just one tree, then of course the, the trees may have contradictory results in classifying a new record. Whether, say for example, you give a new uh, uh, game situation, the home venue, goalkeeper will be mad and so on, weather is dry, etc. And you want to find out whether the chance is high that we will win or we will lose. So that's called prediction, right? So in the prediction case, every tree will have their own comments, own prediction result. And then if you have 10 trees, 
then that they may there may be some disputes among the trees therefore you need a voting technique to find out which uh, is the final prediction and then in this paper we also proposed uh, or presented some experimental results where we showed that generally cis4 on an average achieves very high accuracy higher than many existing techniques and i think the best ad, uh, advantage of cis4 is that it always uh, works on the original data set thereby it reduces the randomness a little bit um, it, it doesn't have any randomness in it if you build a number of trees from a same given data set again and again every time with with all other parameters being the same every time you will get the same set of trees again and again so there is no randomness in it and also its main focus is on knowledge discovery it wants to build every tree as good as possible in the set of the trees so it tries to come up with good attributes or good trees sorry uh, every time uh, so that's it's one quality and also it is easy to understand easy to implement it's very simple when you are building one tree you are anyway learning a set of uh, attributes and learning the um, classification capacity of all the attributes so you can easily build the set of good attributes uh, without any extra overhead so, sort of thing and uh, um, so this is kind of like a, a good uh, decision forest algorithm and we have been using it in our industry projects in many industry projects and in terms of getting knowledge discovery in terms of getting good knowledge this act, uh, this uh, uh, algorithm is actually performing very well in our industry projects <laughs> more importantly and um, uh, interestingly you can actually download the code from my uh, web page uh, which is here you can see the URL and uh, if you go to the code link the code is there you can download you can use uh, as long as you cite the papers as mentioned in the web page and also the paper is freely available from this URL from this web link um, please feel free to download the paper have a look at it and download the code and there you go enjoy use sys4 and I'm sure you will be uh, very uh, excited uh, with this uh, the results that it can discover thank you very much thanks for watching the video